Good morning and welcome back to Live at the Legislature. Uh, joining us this morning uh, is the representative from Mililani, uh, District 36, Representative Val Okimoto. She is a former special education teacher and sits on the Committee on Lower and Higher Education. Rep Okimoto, good morning. Thank good you morning, for joining Kyle. us this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, this segment, we're going to be uh, talking about school safety, uh, I think, from a number of different perspectives from your background. Um, can we, can we, we'll, and we'll start off with, uh, there was a tragedy that happened in your community yesterday. Um, can you tell us a little bit what happened um, and, and I guess the, what you heard throughout the process as, right. as news was unfolding? Well, I'm grateful for the team that we have here. Um, I actually was on a, another all day meeting with the tourism industry yesterday and throughout the day I was getting updates about the incident that happened in my district at Milanani High School. <coughs> it contained or it um, was around three students. Um, two of them were victims and the other was the, the person that, um, who had allegedly um, done the, the incident. And so yeah, there was a stabbing on campus and as a, as a teacher and a parent, of course, that, that's very concerning. I just wanna thank you know, Principal Murphy, Fred Murphy from the Milan High School. He, has, he was at the forefront of this and I was able to get updates from him this morning as well as he, keeping in communication with him. So you know, there was a stabbing and I think the neat thing that I, I appreciated hearing, you, you hear different reports on social media as well as on the news, but what I loved hearing was that within three minutes of the incident happening, they had the students of the school on lockdown. Now, <clears throat> every school, every year, we have to do lockdown or emergency drills, and that's one of them. One of the drills is a lockdown drill, and I've been able to participate in them every year as a teacher. And also, uh, some of the schools that I had actually worked at, we had incidents on campus where we had a lockdown. And the lockdown is when you want to keep everybody in the classrooms for safety because there's a harm outside of the classroom. And that happened yesterday. I believe the lockdown was for about an hour, and within that time, they were able to, to have the victims removed. And and the, the police take care of what they needed to. So I felt that the school did a really wonderful job in addressing the needs of everybody involved. And so I'm grateful again for the leadership that we have. Um, I'm proud that you know I have this wonderful school and the leadership that Principal Murphy has has been providing yesterday and continues to do today. And so for uh, maybe the folks who haven't heard the story, I believe it was two, or it was a senior who uh, had stabbed two uh, juniors. And you know, as as an elected official, how did you receive this information? You know, was this in real time, and and then how down the line? Right. So, um, great question. You know, with with social media nowadays, everything it's it really um, published really instantly. But we, I, I've also learned that we can't um, you can't trust everything that you hear through social media. So I was getting updates throughout the day from um, you know the team here, but I was also able to get. Um, I heard feedback this morning from the student government leader as well as Principal Murphy. So I, I, I did hear things throughout the day. I, I watched the news and read the paper today, but I think the most valuable information I got was one-on-one -on -one with Principal Murphy and speaking with him today. And did he give you the, the condition of this, the students who were stabbed? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the male, um, student was released yesterday, the girl, um, the, the one girl victim, and they're both juniors. She is in the hospital and will be released today. And she's, they're both doing well. The families have all been contacted. And again, I think the, the important thing is that we continue to support. What I appreciated from Principal Murphy today was that he, today will have another 18 people, support staff on campus coming from other um, schools within the district or nearby, counselors, vice principals, teachers, to offer continued support. The the school is open, however, he understands that there may be um, students or families who would like to have their their students stay home, and he's understanding to that. Some might not have that support system at home, so he's offering that support on campus, which I think is a wonderful resource. <clears throat> and, and going back to the lockdown, this was something that you experienced, mm -hmm. um, you know, professionally before you were an elected official, and you and given the success of yesterday's lockdown, thankfully there was no one else hurt. Um, is this something that, that the state is doing well on, on a broad level? Was are the safety standards up to you know how you would see fit for if your daughter was Correct. at the high school? Yeah, and I, again, I'm grateful. I, I think that they handled it really well. From my experiences in the two schools that I taught at before being in this position, I feel like the, the drills that were required to do and the, and the administration and the way they handled it, um, um, I think is is really well. And I, I think that he did a really good job again in addressing. Um, 
in a timely manner. We can't rush things because obviously it became at that point a, a scene that a crime was committed on. But I, I feel that this, the way the DOE sets up their emergency um, preparedness, um, emergency drills, is a really good is a really good thing. It's an indicator of what we can be prepared for. And there's many drills. We have to do fire drills, you know, lockdown, shelter in place, um, even earthquake drills. But lock, lockdown is one of them. And uh, this is unfortunately the stabbing that happened yesterday yeah. at Bililani. The school violence is something that's happening nationwide. And, you know, even uh, personally, I had there was a, <clears throat> a shooting on my college alma mater. And there's a pattern of behavior with, with people who do this kind of thing. And so, you know, as a mother, the, the educators can't do it all. They can't right. always tell if, um, <clears throat> you know, a student is having a lot of trouble mentally or if these red flags are coming up. So, you know, what, are, what is your recommendation to? you know, lower this trend nationally and I think that's know, a great sure question. It again. You know, with with increased violence in schools happening, and, and actually the newspaper today mentioned that stabbings on, on schools here in Hawaii is not a common thing. But for me, as a parent and an educator, I think there's a there's a gap that we need to address, and that's again the social and mental well-being of our, our of our keiki. You know, you guys, I, I guess even my children, they grow up in a different generation than I do, where everything is instant. Electronic devices are there, and I feel like there's <clears throat> there's a there's wisdom and there's a value in in unplugging from these from these devices and talking to your children. You know, we in Melalani have character. We have six pillars of character that we work on from the, school, the time they enter school in kindergarten until they leave the high school. And I think that's something that as parents we need to have instilled in the home. We talk to our children. I know that Hawaii, because it's such a hard place to financially live in, that parents are working so hard. But really, when it comes to the safety and the well-being of our children, I think there's value in kind of unplugging and having our children unplug, talking to them, making sure that we know what What's going on? Who are their friends? What are their what are their interests? What when they're having a hard day? You know, I do that with my kids. I say, well, tell me how your how your day was. Okay, tell me something that maybe bothered you today or something that went well. And I think in plugging into our children more, society I feel like would be a different place if we would spend more time investing in the emotional and and well-roundedness of our children. Absolutely, and it, it and it I think yesterday from the reporting it said that the um, the student who allegedly did that you know had a crush on one of the other students and you know just that pattern of loneliness with with right. children and so um, <clears throat> is it is there anything that could be done at that age or you know if you were a parent you saw that is do you see preventative measures right you know we always as parents we try our best to do everything we can and I think you never want to blame any parents however I, I feel that definitely talking to the children I think um, our Kiki of today could learn more coping skills again because they're brought up in a gener in a world where everything is instant and and they have put their value or their worth on how many likes they get on a social media post and that's not really where the focus should be I, I, I was you know from my all understandings from <clears throat> the accounts that I've her that it was a little um, a, a love triangle um, and I, I think that it's you know it's unfortunate that he wasn't able to feel that he could express his frustration or, or disappointment in a different way other than acting out in violence and I think that's again something that <clears throat> If teachers identify it, if friends see it, or parents, you know, talk to, talk to um, those around us, talk to our children. And sometimes the signs are hidden, but if you're having that open dialogue, hopefully at some point you have, you know, the, the that come out, or that could be a concern that could be addressed. <clears throat> Excellent. And Representative Okimoto, thank you for joining us this morning thank and you. you know giving us a very diverse perspective on a very complex issue. And to the viewers at home, thank you again for joining us this week. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at High House GOP.
doing? We have to go. I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol. So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.